Hello, and welcome to the Assetto Corsa Competizione Sim Series. This is the finale for Season 8 at Donington. Uh, I am Cara Frontha, and I'm going to be doing the uh, streaming for today. Obviously, we normally have uh, different people, but uh, you know we're, we're all a bit tight on schedule and such in recent times and so uh, I am just stepping into the finale I thought it would be uh, a little bit sucky if we didn't get a finale stream for all the splits so uh, here we are at the lovely circuit of Donington a track that I absolutely adore uh, fantastic fun and uh, you know not not the easiest racing it's a sort of typical old school tight twisty circuit but um, it's it's not it's not one like some of the worst tracks in ACC where you can barely barely get an overtake on. Uh, qualifying has just started. If we have a look at the track map, you've got uh, obviously the uh, fantastic sweeping first section down the hill, up to the the middle section. Even though it's not actually the middle sector, but uh, the really stressful last. Uh, two corners of sector two uh, I, I find that part the hardest part for me uh, honestly and then the uh, the international section the uh, chicane into the two hairpins which uh, can be a struggle bus for a lot of people but can also provide uh, honestly the gr best overtaking possibilities gonna have to find out who car 19 is so we can jump on board with them it's like it's marcus haller and uh, this, he's going to lead us around for our first trip around the track into the first corner. You've got to dive it in quite deep because you can take a lot of this exit. Big run down the hill. Full speed here, real commitment, really fun bit. And then break really early, earlier than you need to because you swing through this corner so fast at the bottom of the hill. Then... Another full speed section, just making sure you get your line right. Big break, you've got to make sure to straighten up and stay to the left so that you can come in as tight as possible, and as straight as possible to get the line out up to this hill. An awkward uphill braking point, which means you can brake very late into there. And then you've got to get on the power early, and it's really hard in certain cars. I'm sure not the Aston Martin, honestly, but uh, in the Nissan, which I'm driving, it can be really hard to not get your back loose as you dive into the chicane really fast into the chicane huge speed accelerating from the first corner straighten out the second half as you do with a good chicane and then a downhill braking point equally awkward as the uphill braking point earlier honestly swing round a little bit slow there i think from Haller. took a, a while to get turned in went a bit too deep and then a blind braking point here as Haller chunks over the curbs and keep it nice and tight into the final sector here and that was a lap of Donington while we were on that lap thank you to Koromoto 2007 huge shout out for hitting us with a prime don't need to explain what prime is everyone knows your, your Twitch prime your Amazon prime Amazon gaming as I believe it's called now so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, time's coming in slowly. Uh, I guess uh, the first the first two were quite far away from the rest. On their first uh, course, as we see uh, Haller just going wide a little bit there behind our timetable. It'll take a little while to get times in. Um, and... So some, some okay times coming out here from the the, the first couple here. Sickles, Werner, and uh, Butterman all in the 28s. But we're obviously going to see these dip incredibly as we go through the session. Zambrano here in the Aston Martin. Well, the Aston Martin, the Mercedes. Oh 
It's going to be really uh, interesting to see what cars are good here because it, it seems pretty inconsistent. I haven't been able to get a consistent idea from anyone of who uh, what, what cars they think are the best. Thank you, Racing Grad 8. Shout outs for all the Saturday subs. Brano there must have uh, cut the track at some point because he was uh, up on his time. So we now go to Coviesto in the Lexus. Oh, thank you, buddy. It's very nice of you. I'll obviously be here tomorrow as well. And then uh, I might I might struggle to turn up as much to next season, but we're gonna gonna try. I always enjoy watching motorsport, so uh, I'm in for it. Sobrano on another good lap, so uh, definitely looks to me like he uh, might have messed up his first one a bit, and uh, is having to do it again. Might have uh, cut the track a little bit. As I said, we're still seeing a lot of people improving now. These are not the times that we're going to stay at. We're definitely going to get down further than this. So Zambrano at uh, 29.7 now. Eric Hodge coming through to finish his lap. Sorry about this, but uh, uh, ACC is really annoying me recently. And one of the ways it's really annoying me is by turning off my circuit map. And then I try to look on my circuit map to see where people are. Oh no, it's not full now. Oh god, that's disgusting. Uh, full, there we go. Perfect. The trials and tribulations of using ACC. Eric Hodge, sixth position now. It's Martin Bartman, 28.4. That is the new fastest time. 28.5 from Scott Walker. Another great time from him in the Lamborghini. Uh, team name, Rubber Dingy Rapids. But team name should be the uh, Macho Markowski Driving School. Because... Uh, I believe that's why he's in the Lamborghini. Okay. Maché's finally found some people to coach. Very happy, Maché. Obviously, one of our original your band drivers. Yeah, ACC screws me every night. This is just this is our relationship as a as a player and game. As much as I love ACC and especially ACCSS, I'm gonna be happy to take a, a few weeks break from it right now. I think. <laughs> but. Uh, you don't get anything like the driving feel of ACC, to be fair to it. So, you know, every... Every, uh... Every cloud and all that. Scott Walker, 128 free. Just hearing from Racing Grid that uh, he's been rapid in practice. And I know uh, him and him and his, his lot, his friends, have all been uh, in the practice server a lot. I've been uh, with them a little bit. So could be seeing a good performance here from the man in the green Lambo. It seems to be more like the pace we're getting uh, because everyone has... I'm still seeing green a lot, but it's all small improvements. And it's really easy, I think, for people to lose their small improvements early on in the last sector because the last sector is so hard to do consistently at this track. Well, should we shout out here? So Scott Walker is obviously leading a time to right now ahead of uh, Martin Butterman in the Porsche. Jonathan Werner in third position 
uh, in the bottom half of the 128 uh, in a McLaren. Eric Hodge then just taken up fourth in a Mercedes, followed by Pabawashi. And Pabawashi in uh, another Mercedes. So, uh, quite a few Mercedes in the bottom split of here. Mercedes, Lexus, and Astins seem to be the silver split cars of choice. Gustav Gordstag. Uh, Gordstag, someone who I only know how to properly pronounce his name because he's another OG. He's been in ACCSS for a long time. <laughs> you can see uh, pit lane being a little bit awkward as they uh, take that uh, line through there. The rules for this week for all the splits are the same. In qualifying, it is the job of the person coming out of the pits to give way. And in the race, it is the other way around. I don't see Adam Rayner in uh, this split. We have Paddy Redmond and David Chimilo, Chimilio, who are both in the pit lane. Thank you, ACC cameraman. Oh, with a nice golf livery there in the Aston Martin. These two obviously having uh, some sort of penalties. It's chill stream, so I'm not going to open up to see what it is, but uh, they will not be competing in qualifying and may have to start from the pits. And here... Zambrano coming through the last two chicanes. Uh, like I said, this is a really easy place to lose your time, but he is up right now. He's actually gaining time in the first hairpin. Losing very little time in the last hairpin, so this is going to be a big improvement from him, up to a 128.2 in that second position. Fantastic work there from Zambrano. Mercedes powerhouse. Hello, Mr. Tommel. Tommel Tweeds. I don't actually have the standings for silver because obviously I am normally commentating gold, so I will try and get them up to see what's there. Alice in chat has just said it's Scott versus Tondi for the uh, tier four win. From what I've seen, I've definitely seen uh, Pambawashi doing well. I don't know if I should go to the other camera because I don't know. I haven't got a camera set up, so I don't know. That will probably be a green square due to my uh, awkward camera situation that I have. But, uh, yeah, Tondi Mpambuashi is at 110 points right now with Scott Walker just behind on 103. So this could definitely go either way. As, uh, no one is making any improvements right now. I think everyone just lining up for their last laps. Mindaugas Siausilas, who I still struggle with his name. I'm sorry, my man. He's in fourth position right now here in his Aston Martin. Sort of deep... I, I want to call it deep red, but I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like deep red. In certain likes, it looks a little bit brown. I'm not going to lie. But I, I, th I think I see what he's going for here. He's uh, third position right now with 84 so a long shot, but uh, still looking pretty good for a possible promotion. Martin Butterman, who has uh, just taken the pole time, the first person to go into the 127.9s. He is uh, in fourth position on 78. And then Jadka in 73. And Zambrano on 71. They're our top five in tier four. So, obviously, practice session split, 15-15, 15 for the AMs, then 15 for the pros. So, we are right at the end now 
our last drivers going to set laps. Serena Ressa is on a slight improvement, but he's got quite a long way to go. These guys at the back. Not spent enough time on Donington, clearly. Looks like he's lost a lot of his improvement during the last corners. There's a couple of guys at the back getting small improvements, but not going to make up any positions. So we're going to have to start moving on to tier three soon, most likely. Just keep an eye on, keeping an eye on some of our faster drivers, Pambuashi, Walker, and Zambrano, all on laps right now. Then we're going to be on board with Dieter Santon. Dieter Santon for the first lap of the pros. So through the last corner, Scott Walker is still up on his time. All three of these guys actually very similarly up on their times. And Brano struggling a little bit there in that second to last hairpin. Same with Mpambwashi. Scott Walker is the only one who seems to keep his improvement through the last sector, and he is going to go on pole with a time of 127.8. Behind him, Pambuashi now coming through with his own improvement up to fourth position, so a nice one to end on. But uh, Zambrano, unfortunately, when the ACC camera guy remembers what his job is, he has just dived straight back into the pit because he was not on an improvement so now we're going through the first corner with Titus Anton in uh, eighth in the Porsche. Uh, Titus Anton is actually doing very badly in the championship so far. Um, I feel like he must have had some bad races around here. Because uh, I believe he's a pretty fast guy. Putting a lot of the curb there. You've got to be careful with that. Um, it will be fine in qualifying, but uh, in the race, you can get yourself punctures on that corner by hitting that curb a little bit too hard. end of the lap for our first of the pro times on the accelerator nice and early there should be a decent bank lap and uh, actually he uh, must have cut somewhere there so we're seeing some of the pros hopping in Vanden Dungeon with a nice time get them nice and early nice and quick Taylor as well Jack Taylor. Oh, and there's Santon trying a little bit too hard. Here's Andrew Hearn, just uh, ahead of Bunyan, who uh, just behind him in the standings. Just ahead of him on track. Seems like there's a lot less people who are still around in this split. Have they been? Uh, have they been naughty boys? I've heard that the uh, that this split has been a bit of a nightmare in terms of uh, incidents. Andrew Hearn coming across with an improvement just ahead of 
Bunyan will also jump up the order a little bit. Bunyan all the way up to third. Good job from him. There we go. Holy, that took a long time to load the steward's sheet there. So yeah, we have Louis Fernandez, Dion Isca, Brian Dahl, Vita Isalbu, a Lamborghini in the wall, Bruce Hughes, Laszlo Nemeth, uh, all with grid penalties. And then we have Gus versus with a pit penalty. And uh, Alexander Dahl is disqueued from this race. So a lot of punishments being handed out. We're going to see a much smaller list of people on the uh, on the qualifying times for this one. Oh, very easy to do that. A little bit far from Van Den Dungeon. We'll hit on board with uh, Malay. A lot of time to make up now. Malay coming through with a huge improvement to his time so far. He's still quite far back though, so uh, actually he's just going to slot in. He's actually not even going to move up a position. That shows you uh, how slow his first time was. That was a two second improvement from Malay, but puts himself right on the back of the time, so any more improvement from here will do him very well. Dieter Santon, who we watched on the first lap, is now coming through the chicane with almost a second of improvement, which could put him nice near the top. Jose Martins as well in the Bentley. I assume he's still in the Bentley. Uh, he is uh, also on a pretty decent improvement. Jose Martins actually in a Porsche. We've got a lot of Porsches here in uh, Tier 3. The Santon is going to jump up the leaderboard. The Martin's coming through as the next one. We still do not have a pro driver on pole so far. Mark Bunyan, you can see up there in fourth position, is the highest pro driver so far until Jack Taylor puts in a great lap into second position. No, it's that one. So Jack Taylor actually in second. Uh, my point still stands, but there are uh, my other point that I was about to say doesn't stand. But there are only three drivers here in the 127s. 127.8 for Scott Walker, 0.9 for Jack Taylor, and 0.95 for Martin Butterman.
So, no one improving right now. They've still got five minutes left. We might have uh, a load of people in the pits just uh, preparing for another run, perhaps. It doesn't seem like we have many pros managing to qualify so far, and it doesn't seem like many of them are managing to uh, outdrive the AMs. So we're going to have an awkward situation here for them, where they're going to be sort of a weird middle class racing amongst what looks like the main class here of AMs. Obviously today it is an hour singular race rather than our normal set of two 30 minute races. Oh, too far there again from Van Dungeon. Same mistake as well from Mark Bunyan. People are really enjoying pushing onto that grass. Have fun, Paul. <clears throat> I hope the, the men that you want put the, the ball into the, the hoop. That's how it works, right? Sorry to Santon. Looking at him now because he just is dipping into green on the relatives. Just the smallest improvement is getting me excited at this point because otherwise literally nothing is happening in this server. Temp position so far for Dice Santon. Three temps improvement. A couple of other drivers starting to throw on some improvements. That's Santon up to second position. Next car will be Jack Taylor. Jack Taylor is up to half a second ahead of his time so far. So that Paul Gratrix track temp is a bit too hot for mid 27s might be coming out the window if Jack Taylor can pull off the last part of this lap really tight there through the chicane tries to get on the power as early as possible out onto the curb a little bit deep into there perhaps but taking a late apex is the way to go through there just manages to keep the six temps improvement and that puts him to a 127.294. Stein Van Dungeon crossing the line himself now with a half a second improvement. It's going to jump himself up to third. So the pros finally managing to crawl their way to the top of the timetables. Huge shout outs to Scott Walker and Martin Butterman for managing to have their times amongst the faster class. Showing that they're ready for that promotion next season. I say Martins is on a run now. Justin Martins, the number 88. That was the same number I was running yesterday. So uh, hopefully that doesn't mean uh, anything for his pit stops. And he's just uh, cooked it a bit too much at the chicane there into the wall. That's going to throw off his last chance at qualification. Because there are 
only 35 seconds left in this. Actually, there's a, there's a chance. Oh, no, he's probably taken too much damage, hasn't he? He's going to back up. If he hasn't taken any damage, he could go for another one, maybe. But I doubt he's going to go for that. Eric Strom getting around the final chicane now. I think he's the only one with a real chance of getting across the finish line to start a final lap. For his sake, I hope he can, because he's not improving on this one. He's very close. Three, two, one. He has crossed the line, and so he is going to get another lap. Find him, Andrew Hearn comes through with a slight improvement, up to 15. Merle will not improve. Jack Taylor looks like he is on a very slight improvement, amazingly, at the head of the field. A slight improvement through the last corner, almost becoming a whole tenth. But uh, nothing comes of it. So now we have the last chance for any improvement. That is Eric Strom. Bad run through the chicane there, loses a few tenths. So, uh, no improvement coming in here for the Audi, which means we have our timetable set for the one and only race of the day. Here we are on the front row of the grid with Jack Taylor putting in a fantastic time to put him on pole position for our race. Next to him is Scott Walker in the Lamborghini. Scott Walker leading the amateur split on the front row. Behind them, Stein Van Dungeon in the Lexus and uh, Data Santon in the first of the Porsches. Followed by Martin Butterman and Mark Bunyan in the Lamborghini. The very uh, Johnson Button livery looking Lamborghini. Jose Martins and Zambrano behind them. With Tondarian Pambawashi and Mindaugas Sicilius leading out the top ten. Behind them is Werner, Hodge, Gorgstig, Halla, Hearn, Daly, Jadka. Robu, Ressa, Strom, Coviesto, Sorison, Merle, Fernandez, Redmond, Chimilio, and Nemeth.
and that looks like a pit penalty there for one of our guys. I do believe we had one pit penalty, so that will be why there is a space missing on the right side of the grid. These few at the back of the grid will have to swap round a little bit as they head off onto the formation lap. And uh, obviously while they're doing that, we will watch some uh, ads and some highlights. Thank you for being around, guys. Hopefully we're going to have a good race. Here we are, onto the grid. Green light immediately, and we are go. Jack Taylor with a good start. Uh, Dieta Santon there in the Porsche, looking all right, but a little bit uh, cautious into the first corner. We are still side by side a lot of the way back. Almost a hit there from Scott Walker on someone. He's got to make sure he is being careful there as we come down to the old hairpin. All uh, getting through cleanly for now. A couple of people trying to make moves into here, but much like the bronze split races that we had yesterday, it seems to all be going good. And then in the background there, we could just see the last car in our setup, uh, who obviously started from the pits. That means that as we're all coming into the second sector, we have Jack Taylor still in the lead. Head of Sign Van der Dungeon with Scott Walker, head of Dieter Santon and Martin Butterman. Josie Martins is head of Pambawashi, who is the uh, third place Am, who's made up a couple of places there on the start. Really nice work by him, getting ahead of Mark Bunyan, uh, Werner and Zambrano, rounding out the top ten as Scott Walker going for a dive on Stein. Stein actually looks like he was a little bit too slow into that corner because Dieter Santon is having a look for him as well. As we uh, come up into the final hairpin, they are side by side. The Lexus keeping the inside line is going to force the Porsche to go out wide. Isn't going to work from there. A few people kicking up dust a little bit on the inside as we have uh, multiple side by side moments further back in the field. But everyone around our first lap pretty safely. There's one guy who's fallen back. That's car 912. So uh, Josie Merle seems to have made a mistake somewhere and fallen back into the pack with the rest of the guys.
Oh, just behind there as well. There was someone else going off. That looks like Bunyan. Bunyan has gone a bit wide there, taken to the grass. He gets back on just ahead of the 86 Mercedes of Hodge. Hodge has a little bit of a run there. Nothing going to come of it. Back at the front, Scott Walker still fighting off Stein van den Dungeon. So a little bit of a look there from Stein van der Dungeon as we get down to the hairpin, but nothing quite happening yet. We can have a look further down in the field to see more battles happening. So everyone's still getting through quite well, obviously. Oh, as I say that, very close there from Nemeth in that uh, in that uh, McLaren right near the end. And Bumwashi here being pushed a little bit by Werner. Got a few more fights back down the order as well as number 13 is around. That's Zambrano. Oh no! The Zambrano fan club is out in force and there has been some sort of incident. We'll have to check a replay to see what happened there. Oh, Zambrano just get nudged around in the last chicane by an Aston Martin. Sits nice and patiently. Oh, almost goes there. Sees the Aston coming. <laughs> and the Porsche. Oh, no! The Porsche just goes around the outside of him and he just, just doesn't realise that the Porsche is there or doesn't realise how close he is. Tries to back up off the track and makes a little bit of mistakes. And Zambrano there down in last place now. That's an unfortunate one. Stein still getting close to the Lamborghini ahead of him, really going for it in this one. Trying to keep the position there. So we've got all the golf livery Dustin Martin going for a big dive there on our uh, our hairpin cam. Andy T68, thank you very much for uh, throwing us in one of those Twitch Primes. So uh, Stein keeping up a really good pace for Scott Walker, but not able to really challenge in there. Scott was nice and aggressive on the original move and... Uh, that seems to have done well for him because he doesn't have the pace to really run over Stein, but uh, getting ahead of him nice and early has been uh, really good for him. Richard Bunyan, who's fallen down the field from 6th position where he qualified to 11th. Uh, not too bad seeing as uh, how big that off was almost there. But a little bit of a slow move there as well. Puts the, oh, puts the Mercedes just around side him. And he comes on a bit too much. He's going to go sliding onto the track as well. He did did have his brakes on by the looks there, but they just don't do anything on the grass. And that has absolutely put the poor man around. Gets off onto the grass to come around again. And he will be... Ooh, that was scary. Back onto the track right near the end as we see Zambrano in the background. Zambrano going to be making a move here. It looks like he's going for a dive in on them. Yeah, gets Malay there into the chicane. Really nice. Hard move to make, but he's uh, got a position up, so he's going to start on his climb back up the order. So we're now seeing Hearn. I actually pushed the wrong button there twice in the row, but whatever. I wanted to go full screen to this cam, but... <laughs> Great shot there of all the cars rolling past. And uh, Hearn has fallen back a little bit from Hodge, so uh, didn't miss much on that engagement, fortunately. In front of us, we could just see the McLaren there of Werner. 
fighting with Mindaugus. These guys still going for it. They actually are. Mindaugus trying to get on the inside there into the uh, chicane, but Plot jump back out there. You really can't be dive bombing anyone into that chicane. It's not really a place for those sort of moves. You've got to be fully alongside before the turn happens if you're going to make anything happen there. At the front still, Jack Taylor with a very healthy lead and Scott Walker just leading Stein Van Dungeon. Scott Walker really seems to be struggling a little bit here. The Lexus is all over his back here. And Stein is going to want to get ahead because he's losing all sorts of time behind this Lamborghini. It being a Lamborghini as well, you know, we've gone a whole 10 minutes into this race. It can't be long before the uh, tyres are going to start going off. In the back, we still have obviously a lot of drivers all together. A couple of people side by side. Actually, is that Reina Ressa just going on a bit of a dive bomb mission there on Jadka? Jadka on the grass to try and get the cut pack, but isn't going to manage it. Has to fall in behind there and is now getting challenged slightly there by Louis Fernandez. Ten seconds in for Mindaugas. Ten seconds in for Nemeth. So the stewards getting to work already. Jadka got very close to the back of the McLaren ahead of him there, which is really putting himself in danger from Fernandez. This is not a place to overtake, luckily for him, so no risk quite yet. But then we have another Aston Martin going off. That is Haller, I believe. Marcus Haller. He's going to lose multiple positions there. Luis Fernandez, though, clonking over the curve. You can see what I mean. That is a dangerous place to be. You could very easily lose your tyre there. Louis Fernandez there on the inside of Marcus Haller. So he's got to an awkward position now for them. Because Haller is actually possibly going to lose another position to the Audi of Robu. He manages to hold off there by just keeping close on the line. But Haller falling like a stone through the field right now, unfortunately for him. board of Stein Van Dungeon we can see what it's like for him trying to chase Scott Walker down as he gets a little bit loose there The, you can see how he's getting so aggressive here. He really wants to make that move. But all the time he's stuck behind Scott Walker. Data Santon and Martin Butterman are really closing in. But he just can't make the move. Scott Walker was really nice and aggressive on the first lap. Getting around there. 
and Stein just hasn't been able to do the same. Scott Walker has been smooth ahead, and that is often the best way to be in defense. Every one of these little mistakes Stein makes by just trying to push past is uh, setting him up for a fall in terms of the cars behind him possibly getting past. Scott Walker taking a big chunk of the grass there, but it's okay as long as you keep momentum and don't uh, get thrown about too much. Nemeth's picked up a second 10 second penalty somehow. That is not a great look. Stein once again back up behind Scott Walker and this is how you can tell that he has the pace. If he was able to be ahead of Scott Walker he could pull away. Because he's always just right up to the end and I know he's got the slipstream but it's it's not that powerful. We're not in Formula 1 cars here. Back of field, Zambrano. Carrying on on his attempted comeback along with Mark Bunyan. Mark Bunyan, who's done a pretty decent job pulling his way through the back part of the field, is now going for a move on Chimillo soon. Yes, GT Sport with the uh, the uh, slipstream turned way up. I wish you could turn the slipstream up in ACC, that would be fun. If, if they allowed us to do that, as we, the Lamborghini is going to get a really nice run on the Aston, I would definitely want to do a Paul Ricard race with the uh, slipstream turned all the way up. So into the first corner, they're still side by side. It's not going to be an easy one for Bunyan. He's probably going to have to sit in behind, but he, if he has the pace in here, he can slot himself on the inside, but he doesn't. Given some flashes, trying to tell your boy, I'm coming past whether you like it or not. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. But Jamillo has all the right in the world to stay ahead if he wants to. So... The run through the chicane is so important on this layout of the track to how you can overtake. You can get a really nice run out of here, which you can see Bunyan has. Then you can just dive to the inside and slot past. Can't manage to do it there, though. Didn't quite have the pace, so he's going to have to go again as we see another Aston Martin around. But Chilmillo there. I think Redmond around and Chilmillo had a little bit of a booty wiggle on the way out, and that's going to let Bunyan past. Still got a pretty nice tight field in the middle of the pack here, which is really nice to see. We have a couple of pairs of cars further up, but then uh, down here, just behind the top 10, all the way from Werner, actually, in ninth position as Jadka gets a little bit of a slide on ahead of Louis Fernandez, and then all the way down to uh, Robu in 18th. Knights to 18th, all on the same section of the track. Really nice to see. Out front, we have a couple of pairs really racing. Stein, Van Dan Dungeon is still chasing down Scott Walker. Behind him, uh, Butterman, Santon, and Pambuashi have a little bit of a battle of their own going on. And right here at the hairpin, we are in the middle of the pack. Luis Fernandez looking aggressive, but nowhere near close enough to make anything happen. Ressa going wide. That's putting him in danger. <clears throat> but as long as you can get a good enough exit on this one, you can actually uh, still do all right from uh, that because you are still placed on the inside of the track. So it's not the absolute worst place in the world to go wide as long as you can get a good, strong exit. This big pack 
makes it way through the first two corners and starts to head down the hill. Still, no more penalties come out, so uh, we definitely seem to have too many stewards in the stewarding room right now. Jadker once again going to make a little bit of a mistake. Can Luis Fernandez take anything from that this time? Fernandez not only getting past Jadka there, but actually pulling past Rasa as well, it looks like. Side by side into the last hairpin. Going to try and get a good exit out, and he swung around wide and kept a lot of momentum in. This is good for him for the first corner, but before the Merrick, Hodge has had a little bit of a mistake as well, so this might end up being free wide over here. It is into the first corner. Hodge being very careful there and going to cause a little bit of an incident. Because the cars on the inside can't quite squeeze around. Luis Fernandez is going to finally take that position. Once we've seen that he's got that, let's have a look at Eric Hodge and that incident into the first corner. So from the helicam, you can see it clearer. As the two cars who got a better exit come around him, he breaks pretty early just to be safe. And the Aston Martins actually, it looks like Haller punched Jadka into Hodge. Uh, it looked like before Haller came in just too fast, it would have been fine. And then Jadka even might lose a second position here. He does to the Mercedes of Jason Daly. So uh, that's looking like it's going to be a penalty coming in there for Marcus Haller. But uh, obviously we will have to see how the stewards feel. If the stewards feel the same way as I do about that. Look pretty clear to me, however. Oh, we actually had a... I just saw on our other camera there a little bit of door banging going through the last chicane as well. Uh, Robu on Jadka as well. Really wants to get past his. Just slamming it in. Oh, there might be another penalty coming in for that. He's really turning in while there is just another car on your inside and you just cannot do that. That's pretty terrible driving there from Robu. I'm sorry, my lad. But uh, there is there is another car there. Jadka battered and bruised. is going to get back onto the track. Coviesto now also coming ahead of Robu. We're back up to our big sort of train at the front. Sam Van Dungeon has uh, fallen back a little bit from Scott Walker. Still keeping him honest, but uh, not able to really do too much more right now. Uh... Dieter to Santon then a little bit behind him and he is at the start of this train so this is really the furthest forward action that we have going on in the race right now have our first few drivers moving into the pits right now no one really up the front is going to be doing that we're going to have to have a check when these guys get around to the uh, end
a little bit close there, slightly awkward. But they're all getting through fine as we come round towards our last corner. See there, Alexis Stein Van Dungeon, the first of our leaders to pit as the rest of the pack come through. There's Pambuashi. He's going to be the next one to take the dive. You see there, some of the guys I mentioned diving in on the first lap coming out, some of the back marker Astons there. So this is splitting our pack up a little bit, and we're going to have both more issues with back markers and less fighting on the racetrack for a little bit as we are in the beginning of our 20 minute pit window for this race good evening our chris good to see you here thank you for everyone who is uh, coming around to watch this uh, slightly surprise stream Bunyan is in 22nd, and he's actually just taken the position off Paddy Redmond into 21st, so he is making a little a little run up the order, although a lot of the people behind him have pit. That might not be as good as it looks. He actually is behind Zambrano, so he must have made another mistake somewhere. Zambrano carrying on on his little comeback after that incident we saw him have earlier. Gustav being chased down by Louis Fernandez. See a few more cars going to the pit. That's Butterman and Mindaugas. Louis Fernandez also going into the pits. So Scott Walker in, has inherited the lead from Jack Taylor. Stein Van Dungeon here getting caught up behind Paddy Redmond, who is a back marker, but is technically still out ahead. So he doesn't have to give up this position, but he's uh, Stein will be very frustrated here, losing a lot of time. He needs to get good runs out here so that he can pull off the undercut on Scott Walker who's still out in front right now Ooh, be careful Paddy they both get through there Blue flags flying everywhere right now. So we are into towards the midpoint of our race, which is obviously where everything is going to be the absolute most split up. Daly here is, however, fighting Reina Russa for position just ahead of him. So you get Robu with a five seconds for that door banging earlier, and Marcus Haller has got his 10 second. Daly there, right on the edge of grip. Looked like the back end was just starting to step out. But he has managed to keep it.
Jose Martinez out here at the front still on the run with Dieter Santon. And this is an important one. Scott Walker is into the pits. So we're going to have to see what happens to Scott Walker compared to... Uh, we could look at it compared to Jack Winter, but I think the more important one is obviously to see where his direct opponent Vanden Dungeon comes out. Vanden Dungeon is on the straight. And it does look like he's managed to pull off the undercut. I think that was uh, the Lamborghini that we could just see behind. Yeah, there we go. Just got Walker lost out from taking the longer run. He's now back down into third position after the pits have uh, come out, unless there are some crazy pit stops. seen anyone taking the old pit lane yet hopefully for their sake no one manages that mistake there's Robo Robo having not pit is leading Zambrano in 8th and ninth position but they are nice and close to each other Zambrano having the advantage right now because Robo obviously on that 5 second pit penalty Robo going out wide. This time he has the space to turn in. there from Zambrano stuck in right behind the Audi Getting a little bit tight there going for that corner. We saw a few people fighting for position. Butterman and uh, getting past Redmond and uh, Abwashi there getting past what looks like to be a back marker McLaren. Welcome Julio, nice to see you my friend. We are just coming up to halfway through the silver split finale. People are getting through their pits, which will start putting us back together. As we are right now, Andrew Hearn is leading the race. Jack Taylor uh, looking to dominate the race after the pit stops have all gone through. Snowman Dungeon is actually really close to Jack Taylor now. He's done a really good job. He might have been able to challenge for the win of this race if he wasn't stuck behind the Lamborghini for so long. The last lap time between these two guys were about 100th difference. It was 0.013 between their lap stops, their lap times. Stein a little bit slow that lap, but look how close they are.
Miss Stein really pushing it here. You can see he's making all these little mistakes because he can see Jack Taylor in front of him. And he knows how fast that guy is. He knows he needs to be on his uh, top lap times to challenge this. The Scott Walker, who he was stuck behind, is doing a good job leading the uh, AM split. Now that uh, Stein has managed to make the position, he's uh, seven seconds behind. But still a good two seconds ahead of Santon, and uh, Santon isn't even in his split. Butterman looking to be second position in the AMs right now, just four seconds ahead of Pambawashi. Zebrano right now being the back marker just ahead of our leaders. Possibly looking to dive into the pits. There he goes. Gets out of the way of the leaders. Nice timing. And that has put Stein right up on the back of Jack Taylor. Aggressive there, full on qualifying line coming out from Stein van den Dungeon. He wants to make this happen. I, I hope his tyres are, are alright because uh, can be pretty aggressive doing that. Really nice run through here as well. Is he going to go for the move? Jack going a little bit defensive there. Not too much though, just enough. Hello. Von Glan, nice to see you as well. Six hour pull Ricard, holy. Definitely gonna have to check those up. I'm getting a little bit behind on uh, on some of my real world motorsport, unfortunately. Right now we are watching Stein van den Dungeon chasing down Jack Taylor. Jack Taylor realised he's under pressure now and is pushing it. He's back down into the 128s to match Stein's time. unfortunate. I haven't watched any of the real life uh, the Fanatec challenge stuff yet. I always find if I want to watch sim races, I want to watch actual sim races, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Marcus Haller now in to take his pit stop, which is going to be it looks like the last in the field which uh, shows us what our actual order shall be. Down the back of the field, we've even got some fights going on here. Robu trying to hold off or trying to get past Nemeth just ahead of him. Eric Strom here is having a little fight with Bunyan, who's had a, a terrible race falling right down the order. These guys are just behind Zambrano. Jadka seems to always be in combat just ahead of Coviesto. Andrew Hearn there, right ahead of Mindaugas. This is incredibly close here, and just up from these guys as well. 
Jose Martins and Louis Fernandez seem to be really close to each other. Oh, here we go. Jack Taylor had to go really defensive there, but the Lex is still on the inside. Stein just giving him the room there. Maybe being a little bit too passive here is, is Stein. Could have possibly got in there, but not wanting to have an incident. He's still got 20 minutes left, so he doesn't have to make uh doesn't have to dive too much. Stein once again getting a really nice run through the chicane, dives to the inside, gets the braking on. Jack turns in real tight there, not giving him much room, but no contact between the two. now coming through the first corner together And once again, we're back at this chicane where Stein needs to have a really nice run right on the back there. Jack always already going defensive. Stein can't do much of a switch back because the Mercedes is right on that inside. another move Andrew Hearn successfully being dived there by Mendaugas but it's a little bit of a slower exit I have to be careful on his acceleration and the McLaren just pulls away I can keep an eye on our leaders in the corner there while we're watching this fight off the road there from Mendaugas it's going to put Andrew Hearn back ahead really going for but just not quite going to work Zambrano looking for Chamillo he's still been slowly making his way up the order Stein going for it again. Once again, not making it. Going a little bit wide there.
Werner has Gorgstuk on his back. We've got so many fights going on in this field. Zambrano right on the back of Chamillo. We check all of these going into the hairpin basically while we keep our eyes on the P1 fight. Oh, a little bit of a wiggle there in the box from Stein. That's going to fall him back and probably lose him this chance at an overtake. battles further down the field starting to cool off a little bit as we still we have um, Indagus back onto the tail of Andrew Hearn Stein doing a really good job catching up to Taylor you can tell that he has the pace on the Mercedes at this part of the race because of how quickly you can see him catching up I bet you're thinking right now, if only Jack would go that wide when I was actually in a position to try and uh, take him on. Another little wiggle there out of uh, the last turn. But he's uh, still reasonably close. Mandagas doesn't look reasonably close to Andrew Hearn, unfortunately. That is it right there. We just saw in the bottom corner Jack Taylor making a little mistake getting Wiggly going down into the old hairpin and that has thrown Stein van den Dungeon into the lead of this race. Huge shout out to the man in the Lexus here who uh, if he can continue showing the pace that he was showing when behind the Mercedes we are going to be able to see him just slowly pulling off into the distance. This man has had huge pace in the last sector of this race since spent so much of the beginning stuck behind Scott Walker, who we can see still in third position as the uh, leader of the AM split. Jose Martins there going side by side with uh, Alexis, although it looks like it must be a back marker because he was very much taking the line that you take when you want to give someone a position there. Reina Ressa in his pink marker. Eric Hodge, Jason Daly and Marcus Haller all very close to here. Nice little battle here actually going on for uh, 14th place this would be for. Apologies for the WhatsApp ping. I hope none of you thought that was yours. Brano as well, still behind Jamilio. He's looking like he does have the pace to pass, much like Stein, if he can just find the opportunity. Jack Winter doing a really good job sticking to the back of Stein now. Both perhaps showing that it is easier to follow than to uh, be in the lead.
one or Ressa here, but I think for 12. Ooh, a little bit wide there for Werner. That's going to hurt. That's not what he wants to see. Yellow flag you can see on the map is Octavian Rovu, who has lost it at the fast right-hander. Jason Daly just not able to take that chicane, it feels like, in fast enough of a way to really challenge Hodge here. As Zambrano, coming down to the chicane, has actually already made the move on the Aston Martin. Let's catch a replay of that one. Really aggressive through there, there we go. Actually, both of them going wide. Oh! Zambrano almost losing that advantage that he got from Chilmillo going off, but just manages to keep it going. Ole from the Zambrano fans. So he's managed to make it back up into 18th position from being right back in 26th after his uh, early on incident. Oh, what is this? That's Gorgstig. He just looks like he's uh, put a dive on someone. Oh, he's just in an absolute pool of McLarens here. Yep, so it looks like one of the McLarens on the dust a little bit, going slow. Yeah, so he kind of catches up just before the corner where he doesn't want to have to catch up. And so uh, has to dive onto the grass really there just to avoid a collision from Gustav Gardstig. Here we can see on board with him. This is a nice little close pack going. Sounds on Butterman still fighting out front. Those guys are within a second. But uh, after them, the first real battle is these four here. Andrew Hearn, Rainer Ress are very close there in the first two McLarens with Gustav Gorgstig being chased down by Jonathan Werner just behind them. Oh, Reina Ressel making a mistake. The same mistake, basically, that we saw Andrew Hearn make the lap before. This starts to uh, tighten this whole group up again. Oh, yeah, that is something that I didn't quite notice. I was talking about Santon and Butterman having a fight together, but Pavel, our head steward, has just pointed out that Sam Walker getting to the end of this race is just starting to fall into the clutches of Santon and Butterman behind him. Now, Santon isn't really a worry for him because he is obviously in a different split, but Butterman, that green Porsche... They are in direct competition. So we see here, mistake made there by Zanton is really going to uh, put him under pressure from Butterman. Butterman actually just escaping the chicane there, didn't want to dive behind them. 
Gonna get himself behind Paddy Redmond. He's gonna have to uh, lap that green Aston Martin once again before he can get back down to uh, fighting here. Just see, he's got Walker in the back of that shot. Paddy Redmond is gonna get out of the way. Very good of him. That is the correct position to do so. Don't give up your position when you're in the middle of some tricky corners. Just let him follow you for a little bit and then give him the position back. So, this little group still going on. Jonathan Werner at the back of this little train. Oh, big mistake there from Werner. That's going to put him right back. From the guys ahead of him. Gustav Gordstig still on the back of Reina Ressa. Oh! Why is Pamboshi going slow? This is Tondi Pambuashi, who was in 6th position, who was just going slow. There's 5 minutes left of the race. Has he run out of fuel 5 minutes early? That's quite an underfuel there. The uh, only real explanation is that he's underfueled, or he has some sort of uh, real-life emergency that he has to attend to. Yeah, he still has power, so it looks like it might have been the latter. Super unfortunate for Pambuashi there. Whatever it is, thankfully it's uh, not too important because uh, he is back into racing now, so nothing too serious. But uh, yeah, pedals disconnected. Possibility there. Could have accidentally pushed the ignition button. <laughs> I have the ignition button right next to my camera change button, so I am always terrified of doing that. But that's a super unfortunate thing for Pambuashi. I mean, it probably doesn't change too much because he was losing the championship fight anyway to Scott Walker, who's had that uh, incredibly good run. But yeah, pedals disconnected. Or... Uh ignition button one of those confirmed i'm not quite sure of the order of the conversation but really unfortunate for pam watching because he was having a good race there And the lead of this race still is Stein van den Dungeon after his incredible uh, incredible pursuit of Jack Taylor. Jack Taylor in the second position is just slowly falling back for him. With Scott Walker in third. Scott has managed to just pull away from those Porsches that were threatening him before. Butterman and Santon still fighting there. Butterman just... Uh, Falling back from Santon actually is fighting now with Jose Martins. We have this battle just further back, and then Jose Martins staying ahead of Louis Fernandez into the chicane.
a little bit wide there from Mahan, but manages to stay just ahead of Rasa. Rasa really looks like he might just have the pace here. Behind them, we can still see this fight going. Eric Hodge has managed to pull a little bit away, but still Daly and Haller just fighting behind him. Zambrano also has found another target. He's right up behind Coviesto now. There we go. Those last five minutes gone pretty quickly. Uh, Sembrano, I thought would have a good chance to get past his Lexus, but he's actually at a point where he's got to be pretty desperate now if he's going to dive in here. It looks like Sembrano uh, is in the points, so he is still getting a little bit there. What else do we have still close? Jack Taylor pulling in a little bit on uh, Stein there, taking to the grass, really pushing it to try and make something happen on this last lap. Stein just needs to make sure to take it nice and calm, not make any mistakes, not leave anywhere too open if Jack does get close. Jack's gonna have to really barrel it through here. If you've got any trap cuts, boyo, this is the time to use them. No, it looks like here we go. As an Audi pulls up, oh, just uh, again, just uh, getting right out the way of the leaders. Doesn't want to ruin any last lap antics. And so there, Stein van den Dungeon wins from Jack Taylor. Scott Walker coming around the last corner to win for the Ams. Then Butterman of Fernandez here, just behind Santon check all of our last fights into the chicane in case they produce anything but we have more back markers just getting right out of the way not wanting to cause any last lap incidents Jason Daly getting really aggressive on Hodge on this last lap but not looking likely and then our last chance saloon really is Zambrano, but he's fallen back a bit from Coviesto. I'm surprised how badly it seems the Mercedes takes that chicane, honestly. I would have thought that he uh, would have really managed to pull through it. Okay, where the Hearn lost it on the last lap there. That's an unfortunate one. Oh, I, I clicked the wrong one. We're going to have to wait 10 seconds because I'm an idiot before we can then go back in time a minute. See if we can catch this. Here we go. Oh, through the chicane as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, if you do have time for some track cuts, this is when you use them. But uh, unfortunately... Unfortunately, just a bit too much there. So, for the AM split, Walker has uh, come out ahead uh, with the win. So, that means he's going to win the uh, <clears throat> the AM championship as well. Congratulations to Walker. Enjoy getting stepped on next season by the gold split, guys. I hope, you, uh, I hope you're into that sort of thing. Uh... Mambawashi is quite far down, but he had a decent lead, so I would still expect him to come out. Uh, I would still expect... Oh, there's an interesting bug. Look at that. There we go. Just fix that. I would still expect him to come out in at the top three. Possibly even still top two. 
Uh, Mindaugas was in third position, but Butterman got a much better position in here, so I'd expect Butterman to be the last person getting out of this championship so far. Um, yeah, Butterman in second, so Butterman is going to be the last person. So that's Scott Walker, Pabashi, and Butterman. Actually, they're not going to be in gold, are they? They're going to be getting stepped on by the... Uh, the pro drivers, but they've already proved that they can uh, handle that as they're right up the front here. Stein van den Dungeon, huge shouts to him for winning this final race. Stein van den Dungeon and Louis Fernandez went into this final round tied in first position on 118 points. And uh, Stein has absolutely dominated that last race to put him into the lead. Jack Taylor coming in second. He was in third with 99, so it looks like he might have jumped... Uh, Louis Fernandez as well, who is down in sixth position, which should leave him just in third, just getting into the gold split ahead of Andrew Hearn. Andrew Hearn, who might have managed to steal it, but binned it at the last moment. Uh, probably... No, he wouldn't have made it anyway. But, uh, yeah, so that was a pretty fun race, as the AC cameraman does his thing. Got to give a shout out to Tom Tweedy. Thank you for helping me with some extra cameras. Shout out to all of the racers. Everything like that. It was good fun. Uh, yeah. So, uh, shout out to all of you guys, I guess, is the last one to do. Thank you for coming and watching with me for this last minute stream. Uh, of Silver Split. I thought it would be a bit crap if there wasn't a stream for these guys finale. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow at the same time. A little bit early actually because we have our uh, GT4 race for the Gold Split. And then that will be the end of Season 6. Um, we're going to... I'm going to try and remember to organise some stuff. Uh, hopefully doing Wreckfest. Getting a Wreckfest server up. Uh, instead of doing Stream Racer for tomorrow. But uh, we might end up just doing Stream Racer again. We'll see uh, see how we're feeling uh, on the organizational front. So thank you for watching. And I will see you tomorrow.